Attention listeners, ahead are spoilers. Hello, and welcome to The Movie Trap. My name is Russell Carlson, and with me as always, my co-hosts, Chris Boroff. Hello. I have no other memory from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I am also joined uh, by Zach Powers. Currently known as Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi-ho, mummy, away. Um, anyway, on the movie trap, welcome. Uh, one person picks a theme, which you are at the threshold of the beginning of a new theme. So congratulations, good time to jump in. Uh, and then each one of us picks a movie based on that theme. Uh, at the end of the row, at the end of the rounds, at the end of the movies, we all pick and vote. So we all have ten votes to ten points to vote on in the final voting. We all have ten John Voights that we are able to give out. <laughs> yeah, t- t- <laughs> <laughs> John Boyce. Um, I mean, yes, really, uh, Anaconda have, and the Midnight um, Cowboy are the only two John Voights you want to end up with there. He, he's one of those guys who doesn't say no. Um, <laughs> each host, so as I said, we start out with three of uh, ten points to vote at the end of it, and then we uh, we also get uh, three bonus points each uh, to divvy out amongst ourselves for whatever reason we uh, we see fit. Uh, so previously on the movie trap, uh, we wrapped up. The whole theme of my theme, which was ubiquitous movies or movies that everybody's seen, but you have not, uh, which was won by Chris Boroff with, uh, shall we say, a slam dunk pick of (laughs) It's a Wonderful Life. Um, So that means that Chris Boroff has chosen uh, this theme that we are beheld to, and the theme is Failed Franchises. Which is interesting because he chose something that I wasn't even aware was attempting to be a franchise until was attempting he told to be a me. full expanded universe. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't even aware that that was the attempt of this movie. But uh, Chris Borov chose 2017's Tom Cruise's The Mummy. Um, yeah. We are now watching the fun Brendan Fraser one. Right. We're not watching no, the we're 30s watching one. The Boris Karloff yeah. one from 1930s. Which apparently mm-hmm. this nope. one is supposed to be cribbing off of, I suppose. It cribs off of both of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, 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 and I'm not it, very well. We could get into it, but it seems like this movie kind of tried to be its own explosion into a extended universe, but in the most mild way possible, with like no real decisions made. But Zach will probably tell us what this whole thing's about. <laughs> sure. There. Well, this. For 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 a movie as you know, kind of dim as it is, it is it does make you go through every orifice of a movie. You know, you there's anyway. Zach, <laughs> why don't you tell us what the fuck the mummy was about? <laughs> the mummy opens with uh, the exciting discovery of a burial ground from the Crusades in downtown London for some reason. Um, <laughs> then there's a flashback to them making that burial ground in which they put a special gem. And then we cut over to a different flashback uh, 5,000 years ago. So this is probably about, what, 4,000 years prior to the Crusades flashback. Um, But uh, 5,000 years prior to them discovering the crypt, um, 5,000 years ago from now, uh, there was an Egyptian princess named uh, Amenet, who uh, lost her chance to inherit the throne uh, because her father, the pharaoh, uh, had a son. And because of old timey stuff, I guess, lines of secession skip the woman if there's a son born. Uh, Amenet responds by killing uh, the pharaoh's wife, possibly her own mother, and uh, the newborn son, and deciding she's going to summon the god of death, Set. Uh, Now, Set is kind of not really the god of death, um, in ancient Egyptian, but we could talk about that later. Mm-hmm. Um, so she decides to have a blood ritual where she's going to kill uh, a chosen one um, in order to increase her own power and summon Set into the body of a chosen man. Um, but as she prepares to sacrifice her lover, some temple priests come in and catch her and they execute her and mummify her alive. I guess they don't execute her. They just mummify her alive and kill the dude, but not in the way that will summon Set. Uh, anyway, uh, so we jump to currently known as Iraq in the present day. 
uh, where we meet our uh, plucky protagonist, Nick Morton, played by Tom Cruise, and his friend, Chris Vale, played by Jake Johnson of The New Girl and Into the Spider-Verse, um, uh, as they are scouting out uh, some ancient ruins in Iraq uh, on a search for treasure, even though they seem to be involved with the American military. Um, but the place has been taken over by insurgents. You know, just some insurgents. <laughs> uh, they have insur- mm-hmm. Sometimes you go over to Iraq, there's insurgents around. You know how it goes. Sure. Uh, no more details necessary. Um, of it's course, also, and the being entire town, ta- but it's also the entire town they're in doesn't look like a modern city. It looks like they just wandered into Morocco sometime in the mid 1950s, and it's still the same thing. But it's in yeah. Iraq. It's very strange. Well, you'd be shocked to learn that uh, the insurgents spot our heroes, and a firefight ensues, and uh, with a bunch of playful banter and and plucky luck our two heroes managed to make it out of the scrape just in time and discover an ancient mummy's tomb in the process um they get grilled out by uh courtney b vance their superior their commanding officer um and are met with uh holy fuck what's the jennifer halsey um (laughs) whose actress i forgot to write down um, <laughs> I, I can't remember her name, but she was in Peaky Blinders. That's that's where I know her best. We will find it sometime later in the podcast. For now, she's Jennifer. Um, uh, Jennifer says that Tom Cruise slept with her and stole her map a few days prior. Her treasure Anna, map. Uh, she's Annabelle an archaeologist. Wallace. Annabelle, Annabelle Wallace. Wallace. Sorry. Uh, but uh, despite their arguing, uh, they come across the ancient tomb in the sand that seems to be far out of place in Iraq when it should be in Egypt and decide to investigate. Um, While inside uh, is creepy and dark, there's a bunch of big camel spiders around, cursed camel spiders. One of them bites uh, Jake Johnson. Um, But Nick's like, don't worry, they're not poisonous. Anyway, they find a sarcophagus uh, dipped in mercury for some reason which they pull out and Morton, uh, Tom Cruise immediately begins having visions of a uh, weird desert romance with Aminette. Um, but uh, eventually he snaps out of it. They load the sarcophagus onto uh, um, uh, an airplane um, where Vale becomes sicker and sicker and Morton continues to have visions of uh, the new sexy mummy. Um <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, Vale eventually sort of seems to become possessed by the bite of the spider and stabs Courtney B. Vance to death before, uh, Nick is forced to shoot him to death himself, uh, to save his own life. Um, but mere moments later, a murder of crows crash into the plane, killing the pilots. Uh, Nick manages to get Jennifer a parachute and she jumps out and escapes but he crashes into the ground. You may remember this scene. It went viral a few years ago for having the sound mixing all removed and just being Tom Cruise flying over a plane silently going, ah, uh." yeah, that was this scene. I I would say that that is actually the best trailer for this movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, if you haven't seen that, you could find it. You can probably find like uh, mummy sound removed would probably bring it up. Um, So, uh, but despite having by all accounts should have been killed, Morton awakes in a morgue without a scratch on his body. And not only this, his perfect, perfect body, his perfect, perfect body. And not only this, he is being uh, an American werewolf in London did by uh, his <laughs> former friend, Chris Vale, who appears as mm-hmm. a ghost. Um, anyways, he meets up again with Jennifer who, in one scene is like, I think we've angered the gods. I think that maybe we've caused a curse. And then Nick goes to the bathroom and has a conversation with Chris and thinks he's going crazy. He goes out back. He gets attacked by rats. And then Jennifer meets him again and is like, what are you talking about that there's a curse? Why do you think you have a curse? You're insane. Even though two seconds ago she said, I think we angered the gods. I don't know what the fuck that was about, but that's what happens. Um... So uh, they go on to uh, they go on to a nearby uh, church. I think I, I don't remember why Morton is drawn there or something. 
I think uh, isn't yeah, that the like, that's the church with all the uh, Templars in it, right? The, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, the, they go to the, the Crusaders. Crusaders. Yeah, okay, right. they go to where the Crusaders. They're trying to find are. that gem or whatever. Right, uh, there's a dagger. They have they have there's this dagger and it, it's missing a gem. Um, so and the, the gem is needed to complete the ceremony. Uh, but Aminette, who has been sucking dry uh, random people to get her good looks back uh, uh, from the plane crash, uh, meets them at the old church and attempts to sacrifice Nick, but stops realizing she does not yet have the gem inserted into the dagger. So he has to find the gem. And then there's another chase. And then after the chase, <laughs> after the chase everybody gets captured by... Dr. Henry Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll. <laughs> and the prodi- the Played Prodigium? By Crow. Yeah, Dr. Uh, yeah. Russell Crowe yeah, is Dr. Jekyll. Mm. Dr. Jekyll. Um, and later as another character. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> can you guess who? Spoiler, spoiler. He turns into Mr. Hyde at some point, which is essentially just Russell Crowe acting like a footballer from Australia. With a Cockney That's, accent. Yeah. yeah, with a Cockney accent. Oh, God. Uh, so the Prodigium, a secret society that fights monsters and evil. You know, the shield. It's their yeah. shield. They it's, got a vampire. Of, uh, Dr. Jekyll, agent of shield. They got a vampire head in a jar. They got a creature from the Black Lagoon hand. You know, it's all good. Um, <laughs> this is where it's all happening, folks. This is the franchise. This is the money. It's a, it's a regular BRPD of bullshit. That's what this is. Uh, nope, they, nope, nope. They, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, reference, I got it. Yeah. They, uh, they got, they got, uh, the old mummy there, uh, trapped with some, uh, mercury, because mercury is the weakness of mummies, I guess. And, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And it turns out that Jennifer has been working for this group the whole time, again, making it weird that she didn't believe there was a curse in that one scene. Um, Anyway, it turns out that Jekyll's plan is to go ahead and kill Set inside of Morton's body, killing Set for good, but probably killing Morton also in the process. Uh, Morton's not a fan of this plan and uh, attempts to like dissuade Jekyll from it, but in the skirmish, it means that Jekyll doesn't get his super secret Hulk formula in time. So he turns into Mr. Hyde <laughs> and Mr. Hyde's like, or would I be your partner? I think that you could be a force for evil for me. Um, but he manages to get him his formula, and Mr. Hyde is uh, disappears. But Morton uh, escapes, uh, but at the same time, one of the uh, guys working the computer at the mummy place gets a bug in his ear, and he becomes possessed, and he blows up the containment chamber, and the mummy escapes. And so... Jennifer and Morton are running away and the mummy's like, I'm going to, she summons a sandstorm and a sandstorm hits London and every window in London is shattered. Um, but the two protagonists managed to make it to a railway station, um, which manages to take them to the location of the Crusaders. I don't think the church was the location of the Crusaders. I think it's just where the mummy was and Morton was drawn to her. Um, so they go to where the Crusaders are and now the mummy's like, got crusader skeletons they're her slaves but they go through the water and jennifer drowns and she's dead and so <laughs> nick's not happy about that and the mummy's like forget about her let's have another weird sexy scene between us like i don't know tom it's weird tom cruise is way older than you um it's, it's also weird because isn't she still like semi uh like decayed I think at this point she's fully fixed. Yeah, because okay. she's eaten a lot of people at this point. Yeah, at this point she's uh, just uh, uh, Sophie Butella, I believe is the name of the actress uh, from Kingsman, mm -hmm. among other things. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Morton uh, is about to destroy the jewel and she's like, no, we can have all the power of life and death. He's like, oh, well, in that case, I'll put the jewel in the dagger and I'll stab my own self. And he fuses with Set, the god of death. And he is able to overpower the mummy and suck out her life energy. And then uh, he resurrects Jennifer and then runs away before Dr. Jekyll can capture him. Um, so oh. he also resurrects Jake Johnson off screen. Um, 
because he could just resurrect whoever, I guess. And uh, they go on a, a search through the desert for a cure. And turns out the real mummy all along was Tom Cruise. And that's... That's the mummy, 2017. Yeah, that's the mummy, right? right. It, right. Yeah, it, and it, I just it, when we're getting in, away in the sunset, two oh, and the sandstorm is coming behind them because he's uh, he's a powerful yeah. mummy god now, right? But and, he's also, and it's also I mummy away. Yeah, but it's also like the ending is the classic ending where they just say the emotional arc of the character in a dull like dialogue between Russell Crowe and. Uh, Annabelle Wallace, oh, yeah. where they sit there and they just say, well, he's gone through a lot of challenges. He's done a lot of hard things. He's really got a road ahead of him. They essentially just like fudge in everything that should have happened in the last, you know, two hours of the movie. And they just try to like uh, and cover there's a lot it all of, at the end. Russell Crowe has a lot of like dramatic speeches he has to give about how like, if there is evil, there must be a cure. And bird again. Here's some grand pronouncement about the nature of monsters. And yeah. it's very... <laughs> I don't know. I, I, the, anyway, the they, best, didn't, they yeah, wanted... I, mean... I will say that I really like the fact that this one had a legitimate twist for me at the end that made me laugh. And it's just that when I told my uh, Sarah that we were going to watch this, the first thing she said is, is Tom Cruise the mummy? And I thought that was hilarious <laughs> because it would make sense because he's old enough to play the mummy and then he really turns into the mummy at the end. And I was like, wow, he's I did the not, real mummy. I didn't have that on my bingo card as something that was going to happen. I didn't think that Tom Cruise would ever allow himself to be attached as the mummy in the mummy. Yep. Forget about See, the, uh, the, the, the sexy, Sexy one movie mummy. He's the real mummy for the dark universe. E. That's right. Mm -hmm. To to come. I see when my Sarah when she, when we told her I was watching the mummy with Tom Cruise. Her response was, "Wait, they made a mummy movie with Tom Cruise, <laughs> um, and they sure did. They sure did. And uh, you know, and it's not like because Borf and I were talking about this off off air. Out of all the things that I anticipated to annoy me about this movie, I expected Tom Cruise to be you know in the top three but you know for what it's worth he you know didn't crack the top five and as far as things that annoyed me about this movie he's not the uh, worst part about it um it, it it exposition is what kills this movie i mean it is just exposition after exposition oh after exposition sits I mean, together with these nonsensical roller coaster rides that don't make yeah, any the sense plot you don't is know just meandering who. there's so yeah. many there's so many MacGuffins they have to go after all the time yeah, it's, it, it just I'm, kills this movie in every possible way. It's just well, let me, this constant dragging down of bringing up mythos. You know, it's it, well, it's. I have I have my own theory on why that happened because, of course, they were trying to build up like a much larger franchise with this, and for some reason they decided that they rather than starting like when you watch Iron Man. You don't need to know about the rest of right. the Marvel Correct. universe to just enjoy Iron Man because it was just one and fun I, movie. And it leads you into the rest naturally. No, I, I, I think you know what Iron Man also did. I mean, it, it gave hints at a larger universe, but only just like Easter eggs. You know, like that wasn't it wasn't because they honestly didn't know it was going to work. No, you know, and like I think, Universal mm -hmm. was so sure this was going to work that like fuck it, a, a, Eddie Hyde, Agent of Shield, let's go. I think I think yes. Yeah. So this, and I also think the DC EU had the same tr the same failing. Um, the thing they fail to do is they start these extended universes with the assumption that like, okay, we got to get to Avengers. So like, we want to get to Avengers as quick as possible. So in the first movie, they're like, okay, we're throwing in this and that and the other and layering it all together and making it like we're building to the EU. Whereas I think Marvel did it half by accident, which means that their first few movies are just movies and then at the Let's end, it's it like go. Sam Jackson shows up for three seconds. Yeah. It's yeah. like not the whole point of the movie to get to Avengers as soon as possible because they didn't know they were going to make fucking Avengers. But these people nope. start from the yeah. assumption that they're going to yeah. have these hugely successful multi multifaceted universe yeah. franchises. It seems like they just started making a fun movie and then it naturally kind of came out of it rather than, you know, essentially uh, uh, industry plant, I think is what this would be called if it was music where it was something that was stuck into the system and we were all told, this is supposed to be what you're into now, this is what you should like, and it doesn't really work that way. It's like Creed, 
the horrible band Creed. They're put out on Clear Channel, and you didn't have any other options. But in the modern era, we got plenty of other options to watch stuff. We don't have to watch the dark universe just because they're putting it out in theaters. We can watch something on streaming. We can uh, do something else with our time. Can we talk about this this idea of using the 1920s and 30s Universal Monsters as a concept for a franchise? Um, sure. Because, like, haven't we tried this a number of times? Not just with kind the whole of. system, but, like, there... I mean, like, couldn't we just rope in? Well, you know? I, have, I have a few things to say. Well, I'll, I'll say this. One, before this, whenever there was a new, like, movie about one of these creatures, it was just usually just another, like, standalone-ish thing. Like, they never tried to do an MCU thing before. Like, you know, Francis Ford Coppola will make a Dracula movie. Fine, who gives a shit? Uh, there's, right. like, a... There's that one Wolfman movie with... I can't remember who. Was sure, it Abbott, Abbott and Costello. And Costello. There's Del also, you know... Um, <laughs> Costello. Kind of Toronto's Frankenstein. You know, Abbott kind of Costello was... A, actually, Abbott Costello a successful extended universe. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, completely agree. Completely agree. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> then they try... And actually, after this, after this... So then they had this dark universe. The plan at the time was, like, they had other people cast. Like, Johnny Depp was locked in for Invisible Man. Javier Bardem was locked in for Frankenstein's monster. This fell apart. All those movies got scrapped. Although I think they're still making a Bride of Franken Frankenstein that was originally like penned out to be part of the dark. I looked this up and it's still coming out. Like they're still working on it. It's coming out. Um, I mean, I think most people on this argue I think they'll probably that it was scrub most of. Yeah, I yeah. think they'll probably scrub most of the references to like the dark universe stuff. But the basic yeah. idea that came from the Dark Universe era is still being made. However, Ooh. since then, they've done a different thing with these monsters, and it is working so far. So, like, you may remember about a year and a half ago, an Invisible Man starring Elizabeth Moss came out, and it was a hit. It yeah. was a critical hit. Right. It was, that a, was pretty bad. good. And so pretty good. they are making new, like, movies about these monsters. They're making more movies like that that are just standalone movies about the fucking creature from the Black yeah. Lagoon or whatever. Like, they're going to make more of those, which is what they but should they have also, done in the first place. They also changed the scale, though, and they changed what they were talking about. Because, like, when you watch, like, this movie, there is nothing personal in this whole movie. There's nothing that's, like, unique nope. to the characters nope. or different nope. or something that could be bothersome. But with, like, The Invisible Man, that's essentially about, like, an abusive relationship and toxic, yeah. you know, men. Yeah. It's a pretty so, simple story. Yeah, it's a pretty simple story, but it's also like something that we can all like connect with. And it's something that makes us uncomfortable and it's scary. This movie had no real like, I never was worried anybody would die in this movie. And even when they did, I was completely nonplussed when it occurred. This is Horrible. not all I'm going to give you a point for that because like, I think that's the thing, right? <laughs> that's what I wanted to ask you guys, because like, it's not really, it's an action movie. You it know, the action. universal, the universal monster movies were meant to be scary. You know, and, they were meant to kind of be a little scary. And and I wanted to ask you, so I'm going to give Borov a point for that because, yeah, you're right. In order for an action movie to be kind of successful, the characters have to have some sort of skin in the game. You know, you have to be kind of rooting for them and exhilarating for them because they have to be put in an impossible corner that there's okay. no way they can get out of. That's what makes it fun to watch. And, you know, for what it's worth, they tried with this movie. I mean, they threw everything at this fucking movie. There's water, there's underwater fights. There's fucking war zones, museum fights, plane crashes, deserts, trains. Like, it's just fucking Whoa. everywhere. They just throw every action scene because they figured we've got Tom Cruise. He's got a pretty successful franchise with Mission Impossible. Fuck it. Let's go. You know, like, it's that's that's. So it's any uh, wonder why this franchise didn't work because you could tell this was totally like a shitty thinking. That's not the only, I don't think that's the only reason that it failed. Because like, let, let's let's look at another example of them doing one of these universal movies. The last time they made a mummy movie with Brendan Fraser and it was a hit and it was, right. it's mm -hmm. a pretty yeah. fun movie. And that is also an action movie. Like that Correct. is an action movie. It's like an Indiana Jones riff. Um, and this kind of wants to be that too. That one didn't yeah. pull its punches, though, in a specific way. Like, I remember that the scarabs were an actual, like, terrifying, creepy thing. Yeah, they go under they your were, skin and, like... Under the skin part. It, there were scenes like that that were really disturbing. Like, as close as this one got was, like, uh, a person being turned into a desiccated mummy and then standing and kind of struggling around trying to walk. And it's like, well... It's not the same sort of scary. It's it's more like that guy's popping and locking in a weird way. But other than that, it's not really a scary monster thing. Yeah. I mean, this movie cribs from... I mean, we've already discussed the MCU. 
I mean, the old Mummy movie, some from the old Boris Karloff one, all that makes sense. And from things like uh, An American Werewolf in London, pretty heavily. And I'd even argue that sarcophagus scene feels a little cribbed from fucking Alien at the beginning. Sure. Like, that's a yeah. good point. Or even at least uh, Prometheus or whatever. Like, I, yeah. I kind of got that vibe. But no, and I, that's why. But I wanted to ask you guys. You guys are well more versed about, like, what makes a horror movie and what makes a good horror movie. You guys are much more uh, versed on that than I am. So, like, action horror, is that a thing? And because when can it work? And I'm not, you know, if, if we if if we don't mention Zack Snyder, that would be great. Yeah. Um, but, like, because I, I, I thought of Dawn of the Dead, George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead. Because sure. is it a horror movie? But the, it kind of And is, it's also a bit of comedy. Because they're kind of besieged in a mall. Yeah, and I'd, I'd also argue that horror action and comedy often go together like that like the evil dead movies or at least the latter two um well shawn of the dead would be act- one of course yeah and that's another comedy shawn of the dead's more of a comedy though i mean yeah, there's it, not yeah, okay, yeah. too much crazy well, action in shawn of the dead if you want to talk about like just straight up like action horror uh then we got to talk about neil marshall um like dog soldiers and the descent something. well it's just because oh, like sure. that those the are descent, like straight i don't up, even know yeah is the Go descent, ahead, Zach. I don't know if I'd classify The Descent as that much more of an action movie compared to a standard horror movie. Well, I would say that it's more of an action movie because of the fight scenes. Because it's like, there's a lot of climbing and it's like, they they specifically have it set up so that you have the building tension and then the payoff. So it's like the ladies are climbing and things like that and then their decisions kind of affect but the outcome to the, a degree. The, the problem here is inherent. So yeah, I, but they're not doing like, off-the-wall action movie shit, they're just trying to survive still. Like, I think the inherent problem with action horror and doing a straight action horror that doesn't have elements of comedy is if you empower the hero to the point where they can be an action movie star, it's not going to be scary anymore. Like, the point of a horror movie is a person has to be vulnerable to these attacks. And if you Mm -hmm. give them too much... And the point of an action movie is the action movie has to... Like, the Resident Evil games used to be survival horror. And you had very limited ammo... You were always scraping by. Your character couldn't do that much crazy shit. And increasingly, they got bigger guns and crazier, like, your character was cooler and stronger and could do backflips and shit. And it just became an action series. Like, because it's almost See, impossible to empower a protagonist and make a horror movie to that level and make a horror movie at the same time. They kind of did the same thing with um, with Pitch Black. I, that was what I thought of as like action horror because that kind of works. Yeah, I think why that mm-hmm. works, and that doesn't have a lot of comedy in it either. But I think why that works is because the 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 action hero badass is not the main character. He's sure. like a he's almost another threat that you have to deal with that the main characters are kind of dealing with, but they you know yeah. unite in the end. But you're still yeah. dealing with this sort of otherworldly cosmic terror yeah, I guess. you know like well, pitch, I think, pitch black then, was also like a surprise twist like that right. the fact that he was the main character by the end was a huge like flip-flop in the middle because you thought it was going to be rada mitchell the whole time and then she gets right spoiler warning for like a 20 year old movie she gets killed off about midway through and you're suddenly like oh i guess we're just vin diesel's the guy so critic yeah right the, the the other ones some i'm like trying to think of examples i looked up a couple uh so, like, there's movies like Deep Blue Sea is listed. Some of the Purge movies probably qualify. Um, uh, you know, there's a couple. Overlord, which is this zombie yeah. Nazi movie that came out, uh, like, a year or okay. two ago. See, but Overlord's fun. You guys. I knew. They're fun. They're s- None of these movies are really scary. Um, but they're, they can be fun. I mean, Aliens is kind of an action horror. But sure, it's, the second it's aliens. Yeah, it's not scary, really. Sure, not not nearly like yeah. the first one, and and yeah. that's the thing here. If this movie had it made up its mind to what it wanted to lean closer to, because there there are parts in this movie that I felt like could have had potential that could have worked. Like I didn't even mind the whole, you know, talking to his best friend's ghost, him kind of going crazy. If it was a man kind of losing it being haunted by whatever sexy mummy or whatever that would have you could have made that movie work but then why are you casting tom cruise like why what you get an action star tom cruise to do it you're gonna fucking throw him on a high speed chase. and i'll be honest with you man this movie would be better i think if because they're trying to make tom cruise a very like roguish like charming dude like you can't help but like like him even though he's a bit of a scumbag in fact kind of an indiana jones kind of a 
uh, sure. Han Solo, I guess, like the Harrison Ford type. And yeah. I think, sure. honestly, it would have worked better if they put Jake Johnson in the main role. And oh, Zach, I Zach, you got my idea. point. I would have fixed Zach, this movie. You, you got my point because you <laughs> crawled into <laughs> my brain and point. yanked it out, turning me into a mummy. That's what you just did. You, you just oh, jammed great. the thing in there Excellent. and yanked my brain out through my nose <laughs> and then gave it to me. So, yeah, no, that's absolutely I agree. He was the I would say he's the only one in this movie who seemed to be awake, like. Yeah. Outside of the scenes where he's dead and they just sort Good of give point. him a bunch of stuff to have to like meanderly go through. Uh, but here's a question I got for you. In all these action scenes, in all these moments and all these things that occur in the movie, did anything the characters did have any effect on the outcome of any sequence or the story? Tom Cruise stabbing himself? But, becoming Lawrence of Mummydom. Well, yeah, but that's at the very end. And it's also a decision that you kind of see coming because it's a very obvious thing. He's going to do that, which they also didn't explain clearly how like him killing himself somehow means that she doesn't her thing still doesn't happen. Well, she he awakens it, set just sort of inside of himself and he is able to control set to some degree. But wasn't that what she was trying to do? She was yeah. trying to do that same thing, right? Well, she wasn't trying to control. I don't know if she was trying to control Set. I think she made like a bargain with Set that she would become Pharaoh and she he would be able to come to the Earth because Set wants to come to Earth for reasons. Um, yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. For a movie that does spends an inordinate amount of time explaining things to you, it's still there's a lot of explaining to do in this movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's also uh, worth noting. Brief sidebar, because we're getting to the set stuff. Uh, set was indeed a god, not of death, but of like violence, foreigners, and then a couple like agriculture. You know how Greek and uh, <laughs> Greek, Greek and, and Egyptian gods are. They have like five things. And like every, like a lot of Egyptian gods. And again, another commonality is that every single Greek and or Egyptian god is an asshole to some degree, but some are like more assholes than others. Set wasn't the biggest asshole. Like, I think he kills Osiris or Osiris's son, but mostly he's considered an all right dude. There's like Anubis is a god of death. The set, and there's like a couple others that are a god of death. It's like three gods of death. But Set didn't become like a villain until much, much, much later when foreign armies began to invade Egypt. And because he was the god of foreigners, he was like revamped to be an asshole. But originally he was an all right guy. People really like him. Like he was worshipped commonly. So Set's kind of, it's just one of those things, like with Hades in the Hercules movie, like this guy is not actually a bad dude. But that's just, yeah. that's just a side no, note. I, well, yeah, I mean, that's a good well, question about like the entire history of doing the mummy as a concept. Like it seems like it's kind of racist and you know, it's pretty tied into uh, what I would describe as oriental orientalism, like that style thing where they're, you know, describing that whole region as mythic yeah, I think, and I think this Orientalism aesthetic and not really is, is very specific to like Eastern Asia, but I understand your point. Well, it's just uh, like yeah, the whole thing is kind of Asia, but it's just like the the foreignerism and the otherism and kind of like specifically viewing like the Middle East as this strange little like mystic yeah. place. And that and that's even true in the Karloff movie, you know. I mean, that's kind of what oh, I was well, that like, came out nineteen thirty one. I know, I know, I know, like, I know I'm not. I know I'm not telling any tales out of school, but there were a lot of racists in 1931. I don't know if anyone. Hey, well, know a fun it. fact. Want to know a fun fact about Karloff? He wasn't fucking Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was not. I mean, these are all like questions. Like, why is this the thing that's being revamped? Like, why do they need to go back to the mummy? Like, when was the mummy I mean, scary to anyone? I think they wanted to save the biggest names for like two or three movies in. Like they hadn't even cast Dracula yet. You 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 gotta get Dracula's your your Iron Man on this. It's thing. your Captain America. That's your yeah. fucking you know. He's Frankenstein, the Frankenstein, Superman. and Dracula. Those are the tag team. Those are the right. all stars. Yeah, they, when there's a I when mean, there's a Dark you, Universe you're Civil Wolfman. When Dark yeah, Universe you know. Civil War happens, it's gonna be Frankenstein versus <laughs> Dracula. <laughs> I mean, who's, we saw who's, it, Monster I mean, Squad already saying. perfected what it. What was what was the yeah. fucking end game here? Like, what was what was their end game? Like, what was this end? Was I mean. Cause like you kind of see this with the with the kaiju coming back with Godzilla versus Kong and whatever. Like it it it. 
I am that's curious. An end game. That's because a, that's they, an end game to get to. Because they have they have the end of this movie. They have made the mummy into like kind of a hero character, and even though he's like sort of like only a semi control like of his powers, Jekyll is a hero character. Um, unless he transforms, like kind of like the Hulk early <laughs> obviously, on, obviously, right? Yeah, but obviously early. What are the other characters anyway. going to be heroes? Like, I guess Wolfman, you could make a hero. Frankenstein, you could make a hero. Dracula, Dracula is a tough sell. The creature, creature from the Black Lagoon. The creature from the Black <laughs> Lagoon is kind of rapey, and he's an aqua fish killer man. I'm not sure he's going to have a lot to say outside of glub glub and pawing at people. <laughs> Uh, that was the that was the tagline that they were throwing around for the movie (laughs) glub glub oh my god you know i i almost wish these movies had kept going just because i want to see some of the trailers for these movies i know oh man (laughs) it's like this badass action mix of like the creature emerges again Uh, I mean, why didn't they start with that as the first one? Like, of all those creatures, it seems like the creature from the Black Lagoon is the one that's least well-tread, most area to open it up into brand new things. No one has any expectation for it, so you could just make a crazy, freaky, fun movie out of it. Yeah, that creature. And it would just be out there. The Blob! Do the Blob! The Blob is not a universal classic monster, unfortunately. It isn't! It's from the 50s or something. Is it really? Yeah. I thought they did it. Ah, uh, shit. Well, but anyway, like that's what I'm saying. I don't understand where where if this was going to be a shared universe and they were going to have their big Avengers event, and, what would that event have been? Like what? what well, to is, be fair, I mean the original 30s and 40s movies did kind of do this. They had like Frankenstein sure. meets the Wolfman, where the Frankenstein sure. and the Wolfman fought. They had like House of Dracula, where like sure. all the monsters no, went to a party at Dracula's house. I don't know what the plot was. I can't remember yeah. anymore. But like. <laughs> <laughs> They did. They had these movies with like a bunch of monster crossovers where like they'd fight or they'd uh, whatever. Yeah, I mean, and they they made a couple of Creature from the Black Lagoons. I mean, they they, they did that. They 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 dipped their toe in those waters many, many times. You know, so that's why I I, it it is confusing to me that they would choose Forrest Wright, that they would choose the mummy, which is basically they only made the mummy because the Frankenstein was so good and they had Karloff on contract and they knew he looked good in makeup. So yeah. let's try it again. But, you know, in Egypt or whatever. It wasn't even originally supposed to be the mummy. It was supposed to be a, like a zombie or something. And, and I, yeah. And aside from those 40, like we mentioned, even beyond that, the Abbott Costello movies where they'd have all the monsters sure. come in. Or even more recently, fucking Monster Squad. Monster Squad yeah. is kind of what they were trying to make. Sure. And with Monster Squad, they were just like, fuck it. Let's skip the ones where we introduce each of these monsters. We'll just have some yeah. kids fight some fucking monsters. Well, yeah, that's the funny thing, because it's just like a good, fun time. You go into it and you already know who these characters are. You don't really yeah, care about their need, backstory. You don't like, need to be introduced to the concept of the mummy. I'll, I'll say one thing for Justice League, the Jack, the da- the Snyder cut, that thing. Um, uh-huh. I didn't really pay close attention to any of the films that came out leading up to that. I didn't care. I didn't enjoy them. I pretty much jumped into that one completely sight unseen of anything else. Not bad. Not bad if you don't have to sit through introduction for all these hero characters. They're going to have the same flippin' arc constantly. Like, the first, like, five Marvel movies before they finally are like, we're all together in a group. They all have the same beats. There's nothing interesting happening in those movies. It's like Even Captain the America. Even in the later Marvel movies. That's true. Uh, yeah, I mean, but it's one of these things where it's like there's just nothing interesting. Like, you go and you see, like, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and it's weird enough where you're like, all right, this is kind of the same arc, but there's enough, like, weird punk stuff going on. You're like, okay, they're doing something different here. But, like, in this movie... For the most part... Dull. Uh, I think in all those MCU movies, it's usually the ones that people like best or have the best reception. Not always. There's a couple of exceptions, like Guardians of the Galaxy or Black Panther are the sequels to the original or, like, the team-up movies. Like, Captain America is fine. Captain America 2 is way better. Like, because, yeah, you've got the character, you can actually have fun with them now, blah, 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 blah. Doctor Strange is kind of boring. The second one looks like it's going to be fun, in part because it's Sam Raimi making a weird horror multiverse movie, but still. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but uh, in some cases, it goes the opposite is true. I mean, Iron Man never got as good as the first one. Thor only got good. A lot of people think three is the is the best Iron Man. Um, And Thor definitely. Those people are wrong. Those the third and the third the third Thor is clearly the best of the Thor movies. Yes, once Taika Waititi, he should he should have taken he should have had the franchise to begin with. He should have had the Thor titles to begin with because he knows what he's doing with it. Um, Because you're supposed to have fun with it. That's the thing about this movie. If you're going to make it horror. Zach's right. Then have fun with it and make it a little bit of a comedy. Have Jake Johnson be the main character. That'd be a much more enjoyable movie. And I'd actually yeah. probably find him a lot more relatable. Um, it, and it's not that- I think he'd be better scene partner for Sophie Butella because he wouldn't be like way older than her in these See, weird, sexy also, sex dreams. Also true. It also would help yeah. if the mummy was, you know, a mummy. I think that maybe maybe have the mummy be a mummy. Yeah, as opposed type, to a you know. sexualized hot lady. Yeah, it's a little strange. Right, that they just put, like, it is basically like the slutty mummy costume that you see in Halloween, you know, like sure. all the sorority <laughs> parties or whatever. You know, it's the slutty mummy part. It's just like a couple of rags. See, mummy. Um, it, it's, uh, anyway. This, it, well. It, and, and, and it wouldn't be so, It would. they, like, insist on this franchise so much. They open with, like, universal dark universe. You know, you're like, <laughs> wait, what? What is happening? And yeah, then, you know, with the with the fucking you know, Doctor Jekyll, Agent of Shield museum or whatever, you're you're really like, are you really gonna do this? We're really gonna like bring in the creature from the Black Lagoon. We're gonna bring in mm-hmm. all of this to and, and it's any wonder why it didn't work because there's no roadmap to this. And this movie itself was totally like art by committee. Like this was like, oh, yeah. look, you know, like it. Why did they think this would work? Yeah, uh, well, like, I think after this movie came out, we could talk a little bit about what people have said since. Like, um, the director, Kurtzman, has kind of said that he regretted this one due to the fact that he didn't have complete creative control, which I don't know if that would have been any better based off other things he's made. But um, some of the stuff that came up in this, there's just weird decisions that happened. Like, the whole plane sequence evidently had to be shot because of Tom Cruise on a real vomit comet. Um, and it made like 25 people on the crew really sick over time because they had to keep going up and down, up and down, rather than what Kurtzman had suggested, which was let's just do this on wires on the ground. Um, so tons of money got spent on something that I, I personally didn't know that was even shot in the air. I thought it was shot on green screens or something else because it, much like all these films, like, Special effects have gotten to the point where I can't tell the difference sometimes, and the stuff that they add in makes it look cheap. So it's like when they look out the window, you can tell that's not really being up in a plane. Yeah. Uh, I think that's true sometimes. Like, obviously, with, I think these, like, big, spectacular, part of the biggest problem I have with, like, MCU movies and why I think things like uh, the second Captain America movie and, to a lesser extent, Black Panther are often cited as some of the better ones is because... The ends are just like CGI orgies, and um, those two movies have a lot more practical effects going on. But the thing about The Wires is, like, that would have looked just as good. Like, that's still a practical effect. It's it's not a bunch of CGI, like... I mean, there is CGI all over this movie. They've got, like, a bunch of CGI mummies and sandstorms and shit like that. So if you're going to go practical, like... Try and go practical for something like that that is going to require a ton of CGI otherwise. Instead of something like the plane shit where it's like, if you do wires, you're going to get the same effect. Yeah. It seemed like they just like focused the budget on the wrong parts. Yeah. It was kind of part of it. Yeah. And the fact that and like I, no I, one does I, anything to make like, any of these sequences different. Like I it, I just keep coming back to that. Like cuz like they it didn't matter little, that the plane crashed. Right. And that's why, like, okay, I have two things to say about the the ending of, you know, hi-ho, mummy, uh, the lone <laughs> mummy. Um, so there's a point in the movie where he gets in his big fisty cuffs with, uh, with, with Amatet or whatever and sucks all the life of her, and then he becomes the mummy, I guess. You never see his face after that. So what do you want to bet Tom Cruise was done? And he's like, okay, well, I'm done, guys. We wrapped. And then we're like, shit, we've got to shoot things that would make this into a bigger universe. All right, you, wrap up your face. And we'll get Tom in the sound booth. We'll record a little bit of dialogue, and, and we're done. 
Because, you know, they, they make him purposely in the shadows when Annabelle Wallace is talking to him. So you can't see his face. Could be anybody in there. And then he's literally covering his whole face, like, looking through it. I understand it's the callback from the beginning. But it is just like, it, it could be anybody under there. And did so they, they gotta, really they gotta You got to wrap it, him up once he's the mummy. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> but did they really... Did they really think that in this franchise building machine that they are attempting to create, that Tom Cruise was going to come back? That you're going to be able to afford Tom Cruise? I mean, uh, you can barely I, afford Tom I Cruise. Would be, I would be. I would not be inconceivable to me. Yeah, I would be totally surprised if he didn't have points on this. Like to be real, someone that size, uh, like a, because this looked like it could have been like a billion dollar sure. franchise. He totally yeah. would have had points on the back end. Like yeah. like we mentioned earlier, some of the names they signed are pretty big names. I know, like, I mean, Johnny Depp has fallen, but even in 2017, he hadn't fallen as far as he has now. Um, yeah, yeah. Harvey Arbardem was still pretty big. Like, I don't think he's the biggest actor in the world, but he's pretty big. Uh, you know, like I think these are not like insignificant names and they got these people for I guarantee you multi picture deals. Yeah. Like in the contract, sure. multi picture. Yeah. Um, well the one of the stories I've heard, like when they're putting these deals together, is that they actually had retrofitted an entire building on the universal campus to be the dark universe uh building. So you go in and it's evidently all of it has like got beakers and like mummy shit and all that kind of put around because they thought this was going to be like a huge thing. So they put tons of money into developing this building to kind of put their mark down. So when people walked in, they're like, oh, my God, it's such a the big dark thing universe. With, yeah. yeah. And uh, the movie bombed, uh, mm. according to American uh, numbers. So they didn't want to do any of that. It. Just really quickly, because I did look it up, and we mentioned this briefly. Uh, this movie was financially just fine. Like, it cost like $115 million for the budget, but it made back internationally $410 million. Uh, okay. So it's not an unsuccessful, as far as the numbers go, movie, but it still is not a tentpole that was billions of dollars. So I think they... Yeah, and I think well, you know, I mean, with with stuff like these dark universes, half of it is going to be what m merchandising, and I suspect the main market for that remains Americans. Like I'm sure there's some in in ch in uh, foreign countries, China and the like, but I almost think that like most of the marketing shit was going to be aimed. And if they like tried to do some theme park ride or all that kind of jackass, to fucking stick them on a Mountain yeah. Dew, um, yeah. like. And if Americans aren't interested, that's a big part of your market that's like, well, we can't sell fucking Funko Pops to these people. So why bother? Yeah. 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 I mean, it, 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 it is about Mark. But that's why, like, these, the, most of these characters, mummies, Frankenstein, Dracula, these are public domain anyway. They are, right? yeah. You can, you, who gives a shit? You, it doesn't have to be universal. Why? You, so if you're going to put your stamp on this, you know, your stamp's got to be a little bit better than Sexy Mummy and Tom Cruise going through a billion roller coaster explosions. Yes. Um, and and it, it, I thought it could have worked if they leaned more into the horror aspect, if they leaned more into it being scary rather than it being pew, pew, pew. Uh, um, I thought that that, because you don't see too many mummy movies like that anymore. Sure. Uh, you know, like it, it has been more the Brendan Fraser, the Indiana Jones type of story. Those are fine. I have no, I, I don't have a problem with them really. The first one, at least. I only, I don't think I've seen any other one, but, the, but it was fine. You know, it was, it was fine. Um, but this one was it, because it's not clear of why they're being chased or who's doing the chasing or, and it just seems like it's just this constant, uh, just orgy of just yeah action and it just it, there's no motivation for it and like Morf said you don't care about Tom Cruise you know you don't really care about this character at all like, it, it's baffling to me that like he fights back on this whole curse and gods and stuff but he just survived a plane crash with well that's because he was the him. chosen one or something um, or whatever yeah. but uh yeah actually I'm gonna give you I'll give you a point for that because I kind of agree. I think the best way to have done this was to make it more of a clear counterpoint to Marvel by not by having a clearly different tone. And if you're going to make a dark universe, you might as well make it fucking dark and scary and shit like that. And maybe it's not as good for fucking merchandising because horror movies are just not as popular as action movies like straight up. 
But you could have had a successful fucking franchise. You could have had a success. You know, uh, the the folks over at uh, I don't know what's a successful horror franchise nowadays. Uh, Saw. Saw. Oh, or the or the James Wan people, the people who make those fucking Conjuring movies and all their spinoffs. They're not. They're they're doing all right. They're pretty happy with what they got. Well, it's also right. like with, it's with probably like valuable. This, I really think less is more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also valuable because it's like they allowed it to be scary. Like we think back to the 1930s, like Marvel movies, as being kind of quaint. But when they came out, they were actually scary for people. It was disturbing. They were like, "Oh my God, this is like a sure. wolf man." It's stuff that actually scared them. And it took however many years it's been since then for these characters that were originally very disturbing to become so normalized and so comfortable that you're fine with your child wearing the face of like a corpse that has been reanimated and put together from a bunch of other corpses or a man who eventually turns into a wolf criminals or a man who turns into a wolf and like violently kills people around him to eat them things like that that have been normalized and are now comfortable and able to be it's worth noting easily accessed the majority of these movies the foundational text is not those original horror movies it's novels it's mary shelley's frankenstein bram stoker's novel hg wells invisible man there's a couple that like were made up whoever uh, robert lewis stevenson wrote jekyll and hyde i think yeah Mm -hmm. correct yeah the mummy's the only one that doesn't have a source material and uh probably i don't think the creature from the black lagoon does either (laughs) yeah that that's probably not that was probably just a really cool costume that somebody built and they're like hey it, it can fit underwater let's go um you know it's uh and those yeah. and those books are still regarded as 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 great literature and like fairly and you know to some degree frightening I suppose I think that they're like they it's harder for a book to lose that edge I think than a film um I mean they're not like horrifyingly yeah. scary but I think they're still considered like somewhat no but there's works. you read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein there there's you if if you read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein I mean there's some parts that will like that kind of make your skin crawl like he has sure. this whole dream about resurrecting his mother it's it's very it's it it, it, it gets pretty it it, it gets you know kind yeah, of your skin same, crawl. Well, it's also, dracula dracula 2 has some some cool stuff uh in there yeah, and in i mean a lot of those a lot of those sto- stories also have subtext that matters like sure. frankenstein is kind of For clearly sure. about the fact that uh the shelley essentially like abandoned his children like he had like a former wife with kids and then went off to be with Mary Shelley. So to me, that story has always been the question of like, you know, uh, bastard children and what the long term effects of like having a child and then abandoning your child and then that coming to bear later in your life. Sure. Or, I mean, and also you know, very clearly, like she was pretty explicit, like tampering in the field of God was intentionally yeah. a yes, very big that thing. Was, yeah, that, a yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, there's the just like an emotional truth. Just literally yeah. just the mummy was literally just cobbled together by Universal back in the 30s just because they had Karloff on contract. I mean, so that it's so ironic that they chose to do this movie to spearhead the franchise. And it, again, is just cobbled together. It's it's just... Completely- and I do wonder if it's because of the success of that, that uh, 1999 mummy. Like, it hadn't been so long since they've had kind of a, a, a successful swing at this particular character. And there's probably people sure. who are like, oh, I liked that old Brendan Fraser movie. And they definitely take things from it. Like, I think the Tom Cruise character sure. is supposed to be Brendan Fraser-esque. I think there's the face in the sand, sand cloud. Like, shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, bugs, what have you. Mm-hmm. So this um, this was a yeah, pretty, so this a pretty this was- yeah, it was a pretty tame choice uh, to just sort of introduce this idea. We could probably, I think, we have dedicated enough time. So we could probably give our final thoughts, yeah. and then okay. I am desperately interested to find out what the next thing we're going to watch is. I, 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 you will, considering oh. this today's before uh, I Before we get to final thoughts proper, um... Is this your least favorite movie we've watched for this show? No. No. So probably I probably no for me as well. Yeah. I would say this is like, it's not a movie that has enough going on for me to have an opinion, really. Like, I usually mm-hmm. write notes when we watch these, and I didn't write any notes because I was like, I don't... Dude, nothing. I'm totally with you. I yeah. struggle to, like, write something down. I like, struggle. Okay, it's a train chase, I, you know. I usually yeah. try, probably try to pay pretty good attention at the very minimum, and I was struggling not, uh, 
not to screw around on my phone during this one. Right, because it's just it's just an endless just just a roller. It's just a it's a it's a ride, and you're just like, okay, I'll just go on this ride. Let's and let's the ride transition. Will be over, I'll get out and I'll move on to my next. Let's ride. transition into our final opinions then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, I'll I'll I guess I'll start. Um. Yeah. Like Zach. Like I like Zach just asked. Like this movie could have been worse. Could have been worse. Uh, but it also could have been better. <laughs> it could also have been a lot better. Um, it's it's a it's a bad sign when a movie like this is the spearhead for your franchise. Um, because what it says to me is you don't actually know what you want your franchise to be or look like. Sure. Um, you actually have no concept. You just have these properties that you're just going to essentially exploit for opportunistic commercialism. Um obviously horror action can work um i suppose but it's it's difficult to create the sense of dread in action uh without a doomed protagonist per se i think i and sure. and, and the fact that they kind of let tom cruise off the hook where he just becomes you know uh, you know mummy cowboy or whatever riding in the deserts with jake johnson uh, you're sort of like, well, why did I even bother? Like, this was, like, he got out anyway, and now he can't be killed. Now there's no reason to even give a shit. Um, so, yeah, and I also think that, um, you know, when you're making movies about, you know, sort of the undead and stuff, it would help to have them kind of look like the undead. Just a just a thought. But, yeah, yeah, that was all my final thoughts, because there's not a lot of thought you can give into this movie. Uh, there's, just, there's just nothing. I'll go next. Um... So to sort of springboard, first of all, uh, yeah, like horror, uh, action horror, I was thinking about that more we went. Like, I think if you want a, a good example of how to do some action horror where the premise is like a singular unkillable force is, is methodically and relentlessly coming after you, it's like the Terminator. The Terminator is your inspiration sure. for that. Um, but regardless, this is not the worst movie we have seen, but it is the movie with the least character. It's maybe the most generic and boring. It is the epitome of a studio movie. Like it is, you know, it's empty. It's so, it's very, it's deeply soulless, like to its core. Um, uh, the intention of like springboarding this into a huge franchise is soulless. Like the reason that that's the reason this movie exists instead of any kind of creative vision of like actual, that wasn't based on making money. Like no one had a creative vision that was like, not based on we can make a billion fucking dollars overnight. It's it's completely yeah. There is it is appropriate that it is the mummy. There is no life in this movie whatsoever. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's my final thoughts on on this movie. I uh, I appreciate the uh, the reviewer pun that was put in at the end because yeah the. Uh... This movie didn't have anything happening. Like, it didn't feel like anyone had really made any decisions. It didn't feel like any actual, like, hard choices were made. And it was the most middling, kind of dull thing possible. Like, they just put out this movie that was supposed to be a big mass market thing that we were all supposed to get super excited by. But then when we watched it, um, essentially, the latter half of the movie turns into a procedural. It all happens at... Dr. Jekyll's house uh, at like the, the 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 Avengers area of the monsters and nothing the prodigium. else. Yeah, the prodigium. <laughs> but the thing is, is, is like you have that happen, they have the whole sequence happen and they just they show up there and they never leave and they never go anywhere else. So even though this is the movie called The Mummy and you're usually like looking at exotic locations, even if that's the boilerplate thing, you know, all the other stuff aside. This movie doesn't go anywhere. It has no real choices made. It's not really exciting. It's not bad in the way that something like uh, Enemy was bad, but it's also not good. It's like getting a hamburger from Burger King. It's plainly what it is. You're not going to get more. You're not going to get less. You're just going to get meh. And this was meh. Right. But the drive throughs open at 2 a.m., so you'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, and okay, so that was uh, that was a movie, and uh, yeah. So before we get into the next on the failed franchises list, let's do a quick rundown of the points because we all gave bonus points. So uh, 
Chris Porif, you are at 11 points because you got a point for me about the no human connection to Tom Cruise. <laughs> um, I got one point from Zach saying that this movie would have been better if it just went straight horror. And Zach Powers got a point from Borov saying that Jake Johnson would have been better as the Tom Cruise character. Uh, and it probably would have been a better movie. And How, what an equitable point. episode this one. Yeah, yeah, it is. We mm -hmm. did good. So we all had 11 points. So that brings me to my choice. And I've been giving this a lot of thought about what constitutes a failed franchise. Um, because there is a lot of options out there that date back all the way to the 60s. Um, so I decided to do something a little different just because I've been reading this book um, about sort of like the secret history of Marvel and it's all sort of the behind the scenes fights that, you know, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee and Steve Ditko and all them had and um, the many, many times that Marvel tried to launch itself into, um, into television and movies. Uh, some successful, some not so successful. Uh, the one I'm going to choose is the first Marvel movie ever made. I am choosing 1986 Howard the Duck. <laughs> Howard the Duck. Howard the I have, Duck. I, truth be told, I have never seen it. I only know of its legend. Um, so, and, and wow. I'm not too familiar with the, I, I'm starting to kind of get a little bit more familiar with the actual comic book character of Howard the Duck. So, uh, I was kind of curious to see, cause the actual creator was still alive of Howard the Duck and he was like involved in the movie and Stan Lee was kind of upset because he, he always wanted Spider-Man to be the first Marvel movie, but it ended up being <laughs> Howard the Duck and it was a total <laughs> disaster. Um, so I, I've never seen it. So I figured I've never uh, seen it either. I I might as well trap you guys in it too. Okay. I think the last time I saw this was eight years ago, and it was when I was first uh, dating my wife. So there's a funny story oh, okay. attached to this one, and I'll tell you next time All on right. the movie trap. Well, that works. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Um. Yes. Yeah, so please join us next time for round two of failed franchises with my pick, 1986 Howard the Duck. Uh. Well, uh, gentlemen, it's been fun. Uh, let's do this again sometime. Uh, so I guess we'll log off and for my co-host, Chris Borup. See you later. I my other co-host, Zach Powers. Uh, I don't remember any lines from this movie to quote. <laughs> <laughs> they are my senpai. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I've been Russell Carlson. And as always, as we say here at the Movie Trap, not only is Tom Cruise too old to be dating Sexy Mummy, but definitely Chevy Chase is too, uh, Diane Ladd is too young to be Chevy Chase's mom. Let me take That's that again. That's the Movie Trap, yep. <laughs> so not only is um, Sexy Mummy too young to be Tom Cruise's paramour, Diane Ladd is too young to be Chevy Chase's mom. You heard it That's here the, the Movie, movie trap. trap promise. See you guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>